Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to continue considering the subject of three phase, and more specifically, we're going to look at the relationships between line voltage and phase voltage, and line current and phase current inside a delta connected three phase load. So we've got our training rig ready to go. Let's bring the camera in and we'll have a little look at what we're doing here. So on our simulated three phase load here, you can see we've got three loads. Again, these loads can be used to represent perhaps the three windings of a motor. Obviously there's some inductive effect to take care of there, but we'll look at that in a later video. And you can see that what makes this a delta connection is if we look at each individual load, you can see it's got two connections. Traditionally, we think of those as being the line and neutral connections. But here you can see that every resistor, one of the connections is connected to another side of another resistor and the other side of that resistor is connected to the other side of that resistor and so on and so forth. This is called a delta connection because when it's laid out in this kind of uh, diagram form like we've got here, it looks a bit like the Greek letter delta which is triangular in shape. But it's very important to bear in mind that again if you open up something like a transformer or a motor or something that has a delta connection inside it, it won't be physically laid out as a triangle. The loads will likely just be side by side next to each other or perhaps arranged around the frame of a motor. And it is the way that we connect the ends of the loads together that makes it a delta connection. So if you remember, in a previous video in this series on star connected loads, we defined the different voltages and currents that we find inside a three phase connected load. So we have our phase voltage, our line voltage, we have our phase current and we have our line current. So let's just remind ourselves of those definitions because we define them in such a way that it would work for both star and delta. So the line voltage is the voltage between any two supply lines. So that means we could measure the voltage between L1 and L2 or between L1 and L3 or between L2 and L3. They will give us uh, similar readings. We will get the line voltage. Now we define the phase voltage as being the voltage across the load. In the star connected system, that meant measuring the voltage between line and neutral effectively. But what do you notice about this delta connected load? What's missing? There's no neutral. The neutral isn't required in here. And in fact, there's absolutely nowhere for us to connect it up. So we defined our phase voltage as being the voltage across the load. And that's why this definition comes in so useful now, because we don't have to worry about that missing neutral. We've got here the voltage across the load. So we could measure it across here, or across here, or across here. And understanding that is going to help us to understand the relationship between line voltage and phase voltage in this delta connected system. Moving on now, we've got our line current and our phase current. So remember the line current is still the same definition as it was before. It's the current that flows through the supply line. And you can see I've left these little loops here so I can get my clip on ammeter over that to measure the currents. And the phase current is the current that flows through the load. So I can measure that at any one of these three loops. I can measure the current through the load and that will give me my phase current. So now what we're going to do is we're going to power the rig up, we're going to put power onto it, and then we're going to measure those voltages and currents, and then we'll explain what the relationships between them are. Now I need to work a little bit more quickly than usual when I'm doing this uh, particular connection, because now we're connected in delta, these resistors get even hotter than they did in the star video, and we don't want this to burst into flames live on camera. This isn't that kind of video. So here we've got a rather lovely Mega AVO 835, which we're going to use to measure the voltages in the system. So I'm going to set this to measure AC voltage. And you can see here that I've got my uh, long, small probes connected to my test leads, which is going to allow me to access the live parts in a safe fashion. Please don't attempt to recreate this at home. There's a lot of heat involved here. We're dealing with three phase electricity, which is even more lethal than single phase electricity. So please don't try this at home. Uh, this is being done under controlled conditions. So without further ado, we'll power up the circuit. So I'm connecting a three phase supply to my circuit now. So current is now flowing through the system. So the first thing I'll do is I will measure the line voltage. So I measure that by connecting across here and here. And Vargo in making these connectors, leave you with a nice little testing terminal in there. And if we look at the voltage on the screen there, you can see we're getting 430 volts. Now we'd expect that to be 400 volts in a three-phase system. However, we know we've got our tolerances 
of plus 10 and minus 6%. So we're well within that tolerance there. Now we're going to go and we're going to measure the phase voltage. So let's measure that now. Now I need to be a little bit careful here because I need to get under these shrouds that are on here. And let's have a look at that. So you can see there that we're now measuring again 430 volts. So that's quite a nice uh, reading that we're getting. So you can see there that the line voltage and the phase voltage inside a delta connected load are the same. Now when you think about that logically that actually makes quite a lot of sense. So I've powered this off now. You can see that if I measure the phase voltage across here and here there's no difference between measuring the voltage there and measuring the voltage with my probes here and here. And likewise there's no difference then between measuring the voltage between here and here or here and here or anywhere along the length of this up to this point. So you can see there that the phase voltage is the same as the line voltage. So now we're going to measure the currents inside our system and to do that we're going to use our rather lovely Mega DCM 305E. Now this is normally used for measuring leakage current inside installations uh, but the value of it here is that it will measure very low currents quite accurately which is perfect for this system because we're dealing with quite small currents. As you can see there it's actually going to be measuring in milliamps so that's what we're looking at here. So let's power this up. And as I've just discovered to my cost, these resistors get unbelievably hot, so I'm going to try and keep my fingers away from contact with those. But let's measure the phase current first of all. So we could measure it here, here, or down here. They will all give us the phase current, and they should all be the same. So let's measure the phase current at this point. So if I measure the phase current there, you can see there we're getting 129.4 milliamps thereabouts. So that's our phase current. So what do you think is going to happen to our line current? Do you think it'll be the same as the phase current? Do you think it'll be higher? Do you think it'll be lower? Well, let's take a measurement and let's find out. So if we put our ammeter over there now, you can see that we're coming out with 225.1 milliamps, 225.1 milliamps. So we're actually getting a higher current here than we had over here. Now that kind of makes sense because the current flowing through this line conductor isn't just the current flowing through this load, it's also part of the current flowing through this load. So these currents combine to give us the value here, but as you can probably see from those two numbers that we just measured, it's not a matter of just adding those two values together. We can't just double this value to get that value. There is a number that relates them to each other, and if you've already seen the star video, Hopefully you know what that number is. So at this point, we're going to go over to the whiteboard. We'll have a look at a diagram of this and we'll have a look at those all important relationships between voltages and currents inside a delta connected load. So you can see on the screen here, we've got our delta connected load drawn out. And what we can do now is we can fill in our individual voltages and currents. So first of all, we measured a line voltage of 430 volts. So we've got that there and we measured the phase voltage across the load as also being 430 volts. Now again, it might seem a little bit strange, but at this stage, just for the sake of thoroughness, we're gonna write down the relationship between those two values in the delta connected load. The line voltage, VL, is equal to the phase voltage, VP. They are exactly the same value. Now, let's put in our currents. So our phase current flowing through the load we measured as 129.4 milliamps and our line current that was flowing through the supply line we measured at 225.1 milliamps so you can see those are the two currents that we measured inside our delta connected load. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the relationships between these two currents. So we can see here that this current is bigger than this current. So clearly IL is going to be IP multiplied by something. Now if you remember from the star connected video, we know that the number that connects these two values together is going to be the same as it was from there. And that number that we need to remember is the square root of three. You might see this 
simplified to 1.732, but I think it's easier just to remember this as root 3. We're not going to go into an exam without a calculator for our electrical science and principles, and therefore we'll have access to a square root button, and we'll be able to figure out what that is. So let's see if this actually works. Let's put this into the calculator. So we'll put the numbers in. We've got 129.4, which is what we measured, and we're timesing that, remember, by the square root of 3. So let's put that into our calculator and see what it comes out as. So we'll bring the calculator up now. So we'll put these numbers into our calculator and we're going to come out with a 129.4 times by the square root of 3. And that's going to give us an answer of 224.12 milliamps and as you can see that is incredibly close to the value that we were looking for which was 225.1 so you can see there we're within a thousandth of an amp of accuracy so you can see very clearly the relationship between the line voltage and the phase voltage in the delta connection and between the line current and the phase current in the delta connection we can see that that calculation came out at 224.1 milli amps. So let's have a little summary of this video. So let's just have a little recap of what we've looked at in this video. We saw that in a delta connected system we have the same definitions of line voltage, phase voltage, line current and phase current. So the line voltage is the voltage between any two lines. The phase voltage is the voltage across the load. The line current is the current flowing through any one of the supply lines and the phase current is the current flowing through the load. So try and remember those definitions because it will help you to identify the voltages and currents that you might see in a diagram in an exam type question. We also saw the mathematical relationships between the voltages and currents. So we saw that for the delta connected load, the line voltage is equal to the phase voltage. And we also saw that the line current is equal to the phase current times by that really important number, the square root of three. You may end up using 1.732 as an approximation for that, but for my money, it's as easy just to put root three into your calculator than trying to remember 1.732. So just to give you a typical example, you might be told that in a delta connected load, the phase voltage is 400 volts, and then you'll be asked, what is the line voltage? On that load and you would have to then identify that in a delta connected load line voltage is the same as phase voltage so you would find 400 volts is the correct answer if it's multiple choice even if you're doing this as part of a written type exam it's a good idea just to write that down as a formula vl equals vp and then put your numbers in because it shows deep understanding of the subject under consideration now it may feel at this point that over the last two videos we've kind of launched a lot of information at you we've looked at uh, four new formulas effectively and it can be quite tricky to remember these. A way to do this is first of all to think about your star connected load. So in a star connected load we know that there are two different kinds of voltage. We know that in a three phase system you get two kinds of voltage and we know that those are roughly 400 volts and 230 volts. So that gives you an idea that in a star connected load 400 volts is the larger voltage, the line voltage, and if we're trying to make the phase voltage get bigger, we'd have to times it by the square root of 3 in order to make it bigger and turn it into that larger line voltage. And just as a way of remembering it, if you're multiplying one of the values, the voltage or the current, by root 3, then the other value, whatever it is, just stays the same. So for a star connected load, the line current is the same as the phase current. And then when we look at a delta connected load, those relationships just swap over. The line voltage becomes the same as the phase voltage, and therefore the line current is equal to the phase current times by the square root of three. So actually you can almost extract this for yourself. Remember the root three, try and remember the definitions, and try and remember that in the star connected load, you've got two different kinds of voltage. And when you do that, the rest of it kind of falls into place if you remember for the delta connected load we just swap the relationships over. So there's plenty more material to come on three phase, so stay tuned for more. If you have any questions, then please leave them in the comments below, and I'll try my best to answer them either uh, in the comments or as a separate video if possible. And at this point, all that's left to say is, thank you very much for watching.